Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel again. This is Peter and you're watching Thailand Bound. Okay, so story time once again. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. I get sent lots of stories. Most of them are fairly lengthy, so I'm able to squeeze two or three of them into one upload. But I also get quite a lot of stories that are very, very short. Some of them are not overly exciting, but they're interesting. And the thing is, guys have taken the trouble to send them in to me. So what I've done today, I've had a little bit of a clear out on the computer and all the shorter stories, I've put them together today on one upload. The upload's about the same length of time, but there are actually seven stories today, but they're quite short. So I hope you enjoy these. And to all the guys who sent them in to me, thank you very much. It's well appreciated. And if you've sent a story to me and you haven't yet heard it read, out on the channel please be patient because I have got quite a few and they go into a queuing system and your uh, story will definitely be read out but I do email people the day uh, a few days before I read out so without further ado let's get straight into these stories and as I say there's seven of them so a lot to get through so let's kick off with the first one and here we go in 2019 I was online using the Thai friendly dating app to look for someone for a new potential relationship and met one nice girl of a similar age to me in her 40s. She was a businesswoman that owned several hotels and factories and was single with no children. I had arranged to travel with her around Bangkok and Pattaya as she wanted to show me some sites and get to know me. We had spoken for several months online and by voice and video prior to meeting. But I thought we might as well meet as I wanted a holiday after I had gone through a bad divorce. I met her at the airport and to my surprise she had actually paid for a taxi to drive us from Bangkok airport to Pattaya. She had also organised for her room to be located next to mine with adjoining, adjoining doors. Once we arrived in Pattaya she had shown me around some great places to eat and some other nice places for a few nights and we had a good time. Then we travelled to Bangkok and she proceeded to show me around some tourist areas and some nice places to shop and also to eat, with me eating foods I had not tried before in the Chinatown area of Bangkok. We had a really good time together and I felt we had a good connection. What surprised me was that she sometimes insisted that she pay for everything for me and even bought my parents gifts for me to take back to Sydney, Australia. I did not expect any of this. She told me also, to my surprise, that all of her female friends were businesswomen and all single and in their late 30s and 40s and struggling to find a suitable, well-educated partner. They were all independent and did not need anybody's money but just wanted a Western partner that they could connect with and could form a relationship with. She made a joke that the reason so many good girls are single in Thailand is because of the good Thai guys are married already and the others are ladyboys or gay. Although the relationship did not work out in, in the end due to various differences, what I learned from this experience is that you, if you take your time to search for a decent Thai woman that is independent and not after you for your money, there is plenty of them out there if you search. Now with my goal is to move to Thailand, I am again learning from that experience, seeking educated or independent Thai women that I can form a long-term relationship with. I also learned the culture is very beautiful once you get to learn about it. And I am an optimistic about finding a good Thai woman. I still remember this as a positive experience for me. All right, so there you go. That's the first one. One down, six to go, and we'll, we'll jump straight into the second one. I've been going to Thailand now for almost 10 years. From my early 30s until recently, I am now 42. I started going there with my girlfriend, who is now my wife. I've never really had a strong desire to take girls out of the bars and back to my hotel. My wife and I have been to many of the gogo bars and it's been good fun watching the live shows, etc. We still have some laughs about stories from visiting these live shows and all the clubs. At the end of the day, when looking back, it was always something we never took too seriously. It's also not something I miss. When I think of Thailand, I have some amazing memories about the bars with musicians and great stories. I know most of the stories on your channel are about single guys or finding love and loss in the land of smiles. However, this is not that kind of story. Hopefully it's not boring for your viewers. My story took place around 2018. We had been going to Thailand at this point for many years on holidays, both as a couple and with family. 
We are in a position where my wife and I run our own business and can pretty much travel every few months prior to this pandemic. Sometimes we travelled alone, sometimes with our family. On a family trip to Pattaya, which was my second visit, we were staying in the north part of Pattaya, close to the Dolphin Roundabout. At that time there was no mall and the hotel was nice but run down a bit. Just north of the hotel is Wongamat. We first stayed at the Amari for a few years and then moved to, the, moved to Cape Dara and then later the Pullman Hotel. I have to say that this part of Pattaya is a little slower place and does not have too many crazy bars. It's really beautiful with a very island feel about it and quite upscale. It has a real sense of community and we came here a few times to enjoy this beach area as it was so close to Bangkok which we love. So on this trip we were chilling by the beach at the Pullman and we look up and see to our left this really nice condo. We think to ourselves, hey, that would be pretty nice to have a place right here on the beach. We were sending our parents to Hua Hin a couple of months a year anyway to get away from the harsh winters. My daughter went for a little walk and to the right of this condo was a new apartment block that had just finished, finished construction and was about 30 to 40% sold at this point. We all went to check it out as my daughter said that it was a really nice building with a beautiful pool. We didn't buy the condo on that trip but we did purchase a few months later. Both my wife and my mother and father-in-law used it whenever we travelled there. It's great because it really does overlook the ocean and the property is right on the beach. Whether it was a good deal or not doesn't really matter. For me it was like buying a classic car or something you really enjoy. If you use it well, you don't really need to think about how much you paid for it. My buy-in was a good choice. We've had lots of great times visiting since. The surrounding beach hotel bars have become like a second kitchens and the hotel, hotel staff were almost like family. Not being able to visit Thailand for almost two years now is kind of nuts considering my place has been empty this entire time. So this purchase, although unplanned, ended up changing or affecting our lives in many positive ways. We created so many great memories and stories of our trips to Pattaya. This apartment because became our family meet-up place. My wife and I love Pattaya, but not for the usual sin and skin vacation it's famous for. We love the beach, the massages, whenever you want, amazing food, slow living and also healthy living if you want it. You can visit Thailand not only for the bars and aerobics but actual exercise and a change in lifestyle from what you have in your home country. Sure, there is a lot of female company in Thailand and if I was divorced or single I might even be tempted to taste the local cuisine if you get my drift. This is definitely not one of my more tame recollections but it's a warm memory of buying a condo in Pattaya. Maybe at some point the government there might actually let me come back to visit my apartment without all the red tape. Yeah, it's hard to believe guys, isn't it? Two years, this has been going on for a long time and uh, no light at the end of the tunnel. Um, nothing more to say on that one. Right, so let's crack on and go straight into story number three. I arrived in Bangkok about 3 a.m., a little inexperienced. I had not really planned the trip well and was looking for a taxi to take me to a hotel. A couple of Thai men waved me over and I decided to take up their offer of transport to a hotel. They took me to a hotel whereby I paid too much for one night. The owner also wanted to retain my passport. Never do this, you guys. The next morning, I decided to go out to a familiar bar and have a few beers. As I was waiting at reception, I was approached by a Thai man well-dressed and a little bit pushy, offering to show me around. So the scam begins. The guy called himself Tom and he was a tour operator working in the hotel and experienced with foreigners. At first I resisted and said forget it, I just want a taxi but he was persistent so I thought okay I'll have a few beers with this guy as I'm alone anyway. We all go to a familiar bar I know and I was surprised at how much this guy Tom could drink, obviously at my expense. Tom told me he had a niece and maybe I would like to meet her. A lonely intoxicated phalang is like a lamb to the slaughter, so we arranged to meet up with his niece on the following day. Apparently she is not too old and looks okay, I'm 52. Of course she has a friend with her who speaks good, good English who will translate. We go to a local shopping mall for lunch, I hate shopping malls and this is in Bangkok which has literally hundreds of them. The niece asks me if I would like to buy her a phone, I reply no, why would I want to? And besides you already have a phone. 
I decided to go back to my favorite bar and take my new friends with me. This was my next mistake as they knew, now know, know where my hotel is and where I drink. So now they have latched on with Tom, the tour operator. You have to laugh, I catch up with Tom and we go out with the two girls to a restaurant at my expense again, seafood for four, about 80 Australian dollars. It's okay, I say to Tom, I'm not interested in your niece. She's not too old, he says. I have another one, she's 30. I said, why didn't you tell me that before? He says, because she lives on the other side of Bangkok, a long way from here. At this point, I'm fed up with him, but I agree to meet her, provided that she can speak English, of which he assures me she can. I don't really want to go where she lives, as Tom says it's a two hour drive with his nephew, a taxi driver, at my expense. Tom tells me she lives with her parents, good hardworking Thai people, and her sister. Soon as I walked in, her sister gives me red roses to give to her sister. Well, what can I do? I had no choice, so I gallantly give the flowers to a woman that I don't even know. Of course, Tom has organized everything. We drink beer all, na all night, again at my expense. I discover that the girl cannot speak English and neither do her parents. So now I'm stuck in the outskirts of Bangkok. I have no idea where I am. And Tom has arranged the next day to go shopping for a table and a microwave for my new family. I get out of this at about $300 lighter, which is okay considering it's a department store. So now I'm stuck in a nice house on the outskirts of Bangkok with very nice people that I don't know, but with encouragement from Tom that I'm doing okay. I spent all day on my own. I decided to leave. I take my clothes and passport and wallet and I walk out looking for a taxi to take me back to the hotel. Problem, yes, no taxis at all. I'm in regional Bangkok, but Tom sorts it and sends the woman's father to find me. I felt so sorry for him because he had been working maybe 15 hours and he insists to take me back on a two hour drive back to my hotel. Now this is important to Tom because he doesn't want to lose me. I couldn't lose them for days. I eventually took a girl from a sleazy bar to keep me company for a week and eventually the message got through that I was not interested in Tom's nieces, sisters, daughters or any other members of his family as I now had my own choice of company. Wow, what a holiday. Okay, and straight into number four. Hi Peter, I really enjoyed your videos. Like you, I am a long time visitor to Thailand so I thought I would share my memories of my very first trip back in the 90s. I lived in a very small town in the Welsh Valleys and back in the day myself and four of my friends who had heard of a place called Pattaya halfway around the world which was full of beautiful girls sounded too good to be true. All five of us were quite young at the time and looking back I suppose very naive. Anyway, that said, we decided to book our flight to Bangkok through a local travel agent. As our village was quite small, word soon got around that we five guys had booked a trip to Pattaya. It wasn't long before we were the talk of the village. Being very naive back then, we kind of thought we wouldn't be able to buy anything in Thailand that you could get in the UK, so we stocked up on far too much stuff. It was ridiculous, really. We finally arrived in Bangkok and were booked into the old Bangkok Palace Hotel. We hadn't been in the hotel for more than 20 minutes when we found ourselves out and about drinking in a bar that was full of beautiful girls. We had heard about Pat Pong and Nana Plaza, so we took a taxi and asked the driver to be taken to Pat Pong. We eventually ended up in a bar. It was kind of like an old warehouse building, but it was a strange place. Even though we've never been to Bangkok before and were naive, we knew this was not Pat Pong, but this place wasn't too bad. And although we didn't know exactly where we were, we decided to carry on drinking as we were all having fun with the ladies in this bar and they were good fun. We also enjoyed watching them dancing on stage. The night finally came to an end. Myself and my friends decided that we would like some of these ladies to join us back at the hotel to continue drinking. So we paid what seemed like an excessive fee to the bar to compensate them for taking out these ladies, even though the bar was closing. But hey, we're on holiday, so what the heck? Around 6 a.m., we were all getting very tired and had drunk far too much. So we decided to ask girls to leave as we wanted to sleep. The five girls that were with us demanded a huge fee for each of them. We protested as we thought this was included with the money we paid the bar as it was quite a lot of money. A massive argument broke out between all of the girls and all of us guys and before long we were all shouting at each other and stuff was being thrown around the room by the girls. We must have made a lot of noise and bear in mind this is now 6am. 
I think we must have woke most of the guests in the hotel because eventually there was a knock at the door. It was a hotel security who started threatening to throw us out of the hotel if we didn't keep quiet and told us to pay the girls what, we, what they were asking so that they would leave and the noise would stop. One of the security guys was quite a nice guy and spoke a bit of English because he took, he took us aside and explained the protocol when you take these ladies back to your room for drinks. We eventually paid up, they all left. We were all very tired, so slept soundly as we were also still jet lagged from the long haul flight the day before. The next day we were heading to Patia. We all met up outside our rooms, headed down to the hotel lobby and were very surprised to see some of the girls from the night before hanging around the lobby. Of course, when they seen us, they started shouting and screaming abuse at us, at us and we took a few slaps running out of the front door to the taxi. The driver had witnessed all of the commotion, so as soon as we were in the taxi, he drove off as fast as he could. We left the girls still screaming and shouting at the exhaust fumes coming out of the taxi. Once we cleared the hotel, we all burst out laughing. That was our first experience of Bangkok. We didn't even see Nana Plaza, Plaza Pat Pong or Soy Cowboy. I'm guessing we were about halfway to Patia when the taxi driver gets a phone call of course, we don't understand what the conversation is about, but after about half a minute, the taxi driver asked us, is there anybody called Paul here? To which we reply, yes, this is Paul. The taxi driver hands his phone to Paul. Paul's face turns white as he's listening to the person at the other end of the phone. He is talking to a policeman who is telling him that the girls from the night before have accused us of all stealing money from their handbag, and in particular, they are pointing the finger at Paul. The policeman then goes on to tell Paul that we must all head back to Bangkok to speak with the police back at the hotel. We all took a joint decision that we were going to ignore the phone call and carry on to Patia. Our plan was to have our current driver drop us off on Beach Road. Once he had driven off, we would get in another taxi and head off to our hotel, but the driver insisted that he drives us to the front door of our hotel. The driver started insisting that we tell him the name of the hotel, but we refused and got dropped off very close to Soy 8 on, off the beach road. We walked up Soy 8 with our entire luggage as our hotel was at the top of the Soy. We couldn't believe our eyes and our ears, hundreds of screaming girls trying to get us to come into their bars. We had never experienced anything like this before, and remember, we all came from a small village in Wales. We tried to refuse as we wanted to leave our bags at the hotel first, but we got as far as the Eagle Bar and relented going in for a cold beer. We stayed in the Eagle Bar for about three hours. It was great. We were enjoying the girls' company. Some of us were playing pool, others connect four. We were all thoroughly enjoying ourselves. Eventually, we did check into our hotel. We never heard anything further on uh, from the girls, which as you can imagine, was totally untrue. So this was our first experience of the Land of Smiles, that hideous night in Bangkok and the wonderful welcome in Patia. It makes me cringe when I look back now how naive we all were, but we soon learnt to adapt to the ways of Patia and we learnt some useful lessons. I am the only one out of our original group of five who continually travels back to Thailand on holiday. Looking back, I honestly think that Thailand is not as much fun as it was back in the early 90s. Perhaps it's my age and I have found I have fond memories of my early days in the bars of Patia. I could have made this a much longer story as we had further adventures in Patia as it was only now our second day at this time, but I wanted to keep the story short. If you're interested in part two, let me know and I'll put something together. Thanks for reading out this story. I hope your viewers will enjoy it. All the best, Shane. Well, I did, um, I did actually write to Shane, that's not his real name, but I did write to him and said, yeah, by all means, send us part two of the story. Uh, I had to laugh when he said we took a few slaps on the way out. Uh, I, I can just visualise that. I'm not sure if they would have got away with that um, not turning up for the police. Now, this was the early 90s. Uh, they've got their act together a lot better now. I mean, you're talking... Uh, over 30 years so uh, they did get away with it so uh, well done to them but we're now going into our fifth story so we've still got three to go but again they are all quite short hi peter i'm returning to thailand to work teaching english in middle school in bangkok in the summer i taught english and in the winter i taught skiing in the swiss alps after five years of teaching english i decided to spend the sixth year as a holiday in thailand I left with a relaxed mind. I spent three wonderful months in a beautiful hotel in Patia until the following happened. 
On a dating site, I met a girl who lived in a village near Rayong, which is about an hour by car from Pattaya. After short messages back and forth, I finally agreed to visit her. We met at Starbucks after an hour of waiting. A really beautiful girl shows up. She told me that she had finished business school abroad and that she is currently running her own frozen fish business. After finishing coffee at Starbucks, she took me to a hotel where I would sleep. This beautiful girl took me with her on an evening with her business partners. It was nice and we drank a lot. In brackets, one of them is a director of a company that assembles prefabricated houses and sends them to Hungary. Everything was nice until we had to leave. When we arrived at the hotel, we took the keys at the reception and went to the room. There was no one at the front desk and the girl had accidentally taken the wrong keys and put us in a room where there was only one double bed. I know we liked each other and she suggested I go take a shower. I crawled into bed and wanted to sleep when she replied that she couldn't sleep next to me. She sat down next to the bed and watched me sleep. I said it wouldn't work that way and suggested that we go to her house where I could sleep in another room. I really respected her though, and but I did have ugly thoughts, in brackets, alcohol does do that kind of thing. I knew I shouldn't try to talk her into something she doesn't want to do, right? She agreed and drove drunk to her house. It was already 3.30 in the morning. On the way to her house, we stopped off at yet another friend's house for drinks. It was now 4 a.m. By the time we finally got back to her house, it was 4.30 a.m. I was sitting in my underwear when someone knocked on the door. Had this beautiful girl changed her mind? The girl opened the door and a strange Thai man came into the room. I had no idea who this guy was, but he sat down opposite and introduced himself in Thai. He left the room after a few minutes. What's just happened, I thought. The girl went on to explain to me that this guy was her ex-boyfriend and that he lives next door. She then told me to go to sleep and try to rest and she would take me back to Pattaya in a couple of hours, which actually turned out to be about 11 o'clock in the morning. I could have come to real harm in that village that she took me to. I could have been beaten, robbed, and the jungle would have eaten me alive if I'd been left stranded with no funds the following day. She sent me a text message telling me that she wanted to introduce me to her family in the village. I ignored her text, even though she had told me that she has her own business and she is doing well. I had to pay for absolutely everything. Thailand is, a, is beautiful and I always respect it, but we need to know that Thais respect each other even more than we respect Thailand. Yeah, isn't that really weird? Can you imagine sitting there and a Thai guy comes into your room? I don't know what that was about, um, but I think he uh, made a good choice by, by not carrying on. Okay, two more to go, uh, and this is number six. I have a story about bar girls that I learned about in Thailand. Like you have said, most come from poor farming areas where they have received very little education. Some come to Bangkok or Pattaya on their own and some are brought by older sisters. I married a girl who had been my house girl. We had hired her to watch my son while living and working in Thailand. After returning to the States, I divorced my wife, not wanting to get married again, but having started a romantic relationship with my house girl, who also came from a poor family, I insisted she return to school and get her high school education. She did, and after graduating high school, I insisted she go to college and get her degree. She did, then I brought her to the States on a fiancé visitor and I married her, uh, visa, sorry. As soon as she arrived in the States, I noticed a change in her attitude of looking down on other Thai girls. I asked her why, she said they're bar girls and had worked in bars and married their husbands just to get to the States. I told her not all these girls were fortunate like her to have someone who could help them get an education and have a better life. We were married for 12 years and the first five were very good. We had two children and were both workaholics. I worked at night and she worked at first at an apartment complex in the daytime. I would come home and take her to work and stay with the children so I got very little sleep. Eventually I bought her her own car and then she started wanting to hang out with Thai girlfriends. I would be sitting home on Friday and Saturday nights watching her children. Eventually she had an affair with my best friend and became pregnant by him. I had already had an operation so I knew the baby wasn't mine. I took the children and left and divorced her. She had started a career with Walmart. She finished her career as a manager with them and received an excellent retirement package. She married her boyfriend and he died and left her rich. I think it's good because it will become an inheritance for my children. I left her in Las Vegas. 
We both now live about 10 miles apart in Florida. I can't imagine my own daughter growing up and working in a go-go bar, but then I guess she's always had food in front of her, so who am I to judge? Yeah, that, that's kind of a shame that didn't work out. He, uh, The lady had a good opportunity and she, she did very well in America, didn't she? Okay, we've reached the end of our marathon now into story seven. Uh, lessons to be learned from this one. Hi, Peter. I have another story for you. As you know, I'm an Aussie. In October 2017, I took my sister to Thailand. My sister Mary is an ex-prison officer and a smart girl. She always goes shopping with me and negotiates the best prices. So it came as a shock to me when she suddenly purchased a timeshare in Patong, Phuket. She was approached by an expat and the standard sales pitch about how good the timeshare was in Phuket. She went to a presentation to one of the newer resorts and was basically pressure sold. Mary was told there was only a few units left and she might miss out on a great deal. Later, Mary showed me a leather-bound contract and the paperwork. For God's sake, I said to her, this is a scam. I showed her the scam on Google and she was mortified. She had put down a deposit of 15,000 baht with another 80,000 baht to be charged to her credit card the next day. I told her that we had to stop that payment being charged to her credit card and obviously she was now in panic mode. We immediately called the bank and had the payment cancelled. She was advised to contact the local police so I took her to the Phuket police station to complain about the scammer. I am an ex-cop so I was able to speak to an invest investigator one-on-one -on -one and explain the situation. He took all the details and already knew about the scammers, but usually the fine for this crime is only about 5,000 baht. The investigator went on to tell me that he was aware of these scammers because other people had complained about being scammed, but unfortunately they couldn't remember the exact location they had signed these contracts. The next day the expat that had scammed my sister phoned her as the payment hadn't gone through. My sister told the guy that her, car had, her card had been stolen and that she was going to use a different card. The guy asked my sister if she would be willing to meet him with another card. Of course my, kiss, my sister said yes, but we, were, we informed the investigator first and he told us he would be happy to come along and arrest the guy. So the meeting was set up in the bar where the guy had arranged for us to have free drinks and he would turn up at about 2 p.m. The investigator was there with two plainclothes police, police officers but just out of sight. Just after 2 p.m. this guy turns up with a big smile on his face. The guy didn't have a clue that this was a setup, and within minutes the police jumped out of their hiding place and arrested him. Surprisingly the court case went through very quickly. The guy was fined 5,000 baht and deported but the timeshare company didn't give up as they tried to charge my sister's card again, not once, but twice, but obviously the card declined payment. My sister Mary is such a smart girl, I really can't understand how she fell for this timeshare scam, but the investigator told us that many people do. It just goes to show you, even when you go to a fantastic country like Thailand, you have to be on your guard. Don't buy anything that you didn't intend to buy and definitely don't let anybody sell you anything you hadn't planned on buying. On another occasion, I had parked my motorcycle on Bangla Road, locked it and went for an hour's massage. When I came out to get my motorcycle, it was gone. So I thought perhaps I parked it in a different place. I started walking up and down the street only to be approached by a guy who asked me what was wrong. I told him my bike had disappeared. He offered to help me find it for 1,000 baht. The penny then dropped, I told him no. This is another scam, I thought. I then thought to myself, it couldn't be too far away as the front wheel was locked. I walked up the street just 50 meters to the intersection, turned left and saw my bike about another 30 meters away. I walked up to the bike, unlocked it, put my helmet on and started it. I was just about to pull out into the traffic when the guy who offered to help find it come up and said he found the bike and he demanded a thousand baht. I told him to get stuffed and drove off. Don't get me wrong, Thailand's a great country. I've been there lots of times and most of the Thai people are very honest and friendly. However, it only takes those few to spoil it. So you really must be on your guard at all times. So there you go, a little bit of a lesson there. It's really strange, you know, when I read through these stories, um, you know, some of the stories where like the, the guy who told the story, he met the travel agent, Tom, you know, when I read a story like that, I think, well, why don't you just know? You just say no and walk away. You know, guys get kind of roped into this. I, I don't really get that part of it. And with the scams like this one, um, you know, the guy, you know, this guy's obviously experienced. He's been to Thailand quite a few times. But 
I, I haven't had anything happen like this to me. I don't know if it's it's just uh, I've been lucky. Um, I've had a few little scams played on me, which weren't a big deal. But, you know, things like uh, people trying to sh sell me timeshare and people moving my motorbike around the corner. It's never happened. So I don't know. Um, is Thailand changing? Is it going more that way? But as this guy said, you know, it's it's only the few. I don't want people, if you've never been to Thailand, I don't want you to judge all Thai people and think it's a country with nothing more than scams. It's not. It's a beautiful country. The Thais are great people, uh, very welcoming people. You'll get the same wherever you go. You go to Brazil, even London. Um, there's places in America, Australia, I guess there's scammers all over the world. It's just part of life, isn't it? So if you haven't been and you're one of those guys who follow my channel and watch the videos and, you know, you're you forming an opinion of Thailand based on my videos and others. Um, you know, this is a very small part of Thai society and, and, and don't let it sway. You know, if you're planning to visit, you know, you go ahead and visit. You'll have a great time. OK, guys, that's it for another week. Seven short stories there. Um, as you know, or you might not know, I've now changed the day of my live streams to a Friday night there every other Friday. Uh, the reason I've done that is because on Saturday, the, the football season is kind of really starting in the UK. Saturday night, there's games on the TV and I, I can't compete with that. OK, thanks again. And uh, I'll be back with more stories next week.